I, uh, someone asked me what was maybe most surprising, it's that they really didn't conform to that large company profile of, of being inflexible. They've been, they've been very flexible. Surzin's a San Francisco Bay Area biotech company, started about five years ago, and we're working on targeting tissue regeneration specifically to diseased tissue. There's a known biology that's active in all of us, it's called the Wnt pathway, that our body uses to respond to injury and to maintain organ systems. And we've discovered and are developing antibodies that are able to activate that pathway only in the diseased tissue. And ours work in a slightly different way. They activate a pathway rather than, than inhibit it. But that construct of this more complex binding to two, two different antigens is, is a, a strong trend in the biotech industry overall. We've been fortunate enough to have two antibodies actually move forward into preclinical development at the same time. Our antibodies are not just straightforward monoclonal antibodies. They're bispecific multivalent antibodies, so a little more complex. We needed someone who had antibody expertise, large-scale capabilities, the ability to move rapidly, but we also needed someone who had very specific expertise in these type of both fusion proteins and bispecific multivalent antibodies. The kind of sophistication that is required for these more complex bispecific antibodies really led us to look at Lanza, along with a number of other CDMOs who had that type of specific expertise. Well, I talked about how we were fortunate to have two programs move forward at the same time. We were also fortunate to have two programs move forward earlier than we anticipated, so we weren't really prepared to undertake the kind of extensive evaluation process that you would normally do. So we found a consultant who could help us with the RFP process, identified a number of prospective CDMOs from small ones in Europe to Lanza to some of the typical large multinational uh, CDMOs. As part of that process, I have many contacts in the Bay Area. I've worked in biologics and antibodies myself previously, talked to people about what to expect maybe from some of these um, CDMOs like Lanza. Um, and what I heard was, you know, yes, they're world-class capabilities, but don't be surprised if they tell you that they're gonna take longer and be more expensive than some of the alternatives. And what we were really happily surprised by was Lanza um, committed to doing the entirety of the process in about the same time as the fastest bid that we received. And their projected costs were about 10% higher than the lowest bid that we received. So we really felt like we had the best of both worlds. We had you know, world-class capabilities from a well-known provider and costs just a little bit above and timing that got us to, into the clinic about as quickly as, as any other CDMO. They seemed to have a really heightened interest in more complex molecules like ours and a heightened interest in working with small companies like ours. And, and that isn't true across all CDMOs. Lanza seemed to be going the other way just as we talked to them. They seemed to be focused on more small customers and had an interest in these complex molecules. But of course, the reputation for the big CDMOs is that you're going to have a partner who's less flexible. And we found quite the opposite, actually. We had a cell line that was constructed by another company for one of our projects, but they were flexible about accepting that cell line and working on it. Lanza constructed the cell line for the other. And then what we found in the process is they've been flexible in adapting certain chromatography steps, for example, or buffers to some of our experience. When the Lanza standard platform process didn't work, they've been very open about listening to our scientists, collaborating directly and sharing their experiences, and ultimately, in the case of one of our molecules, uh, adopting uh, our part of this process um, and, and not using their platform process. One specific example uh, was one of our proteins, which is a fusion protein, um, in Lanza's platform process was actually precipitating out when they used a salt concentration that would be a typical salt concentration for them. We used a much higher salt concentration when we made small quantities of the protein internally. Their initial reaction to that was, there's no way that's gonna fit into our platform process. We said, you know, well, let's 
bring it down a bit from our salt concentration, but not nearly as low as yours and see what happens. And they were flexible in seeing the data, listening to our scientists, trying it. We've had some really specific examples of their technical acumen, but also flexible, very scientific approach, looking at our data and taking that into account and making some modifications. I've always felt like we were a priority for them. Maybe it's because of the complexity of our molecules. They want to demonstrate their abilities. They've demonstrated the commitment to our projects with flexibility of slots for different manufacturing steps. So we've had slippage and some timelines here or there. They've always shifted slots and never impacted our entire timelines. So I think to me that feels like we're a high priority for them to get to our IND filing, our first in human on time. The scale that we're working at, uh, which is about 1,000 liter scale for our GMP batches, they have many thousand liter um, of these uh, single-use disposable bioreactors and so I do think they have much more flexibility than um, you know, certainly anyone other than one or two other companies. When we express these molecules and transient expression systems in-house we really only were able to achieve maybe 1 50th, 1 100th of the kinds of titers that would be required for this to be commercially viable. And that's not unusual for these transient expression systems that it's much lower, but the leap we had to make was huge. And that was a big risk for us. So that was a critical factor for us that they had specific experience with either a fusion protein or a bispecific with that big step up. And they delivered on that and they actually delivered on it with titers that were higher than we even expected. They really got to almost monoclonal antibody-like titers with our molecules, which, you know, if we had asked ourselves two years ago, would that be possible, we would have said, no, no. I mean, we'd pinch ourselves if we were able to achieve that. And downstream, you know, they've delivered on maybe less complex steps because our molecules turned out to be a bit easier to purify than we thought they might be, but they've into formulation. You know, again, going back to two plus years ago, we had molecules that we thought, boy, these are, these are pretty complex, and they've you know, really worked well through um, identifying some formulations that are very straightforward. We've moved both of our molecules closer to the clinic now. We're gonna be in the clinic in 2022. We've completed GMP batches, or about to complete GMP batches for both molecules. Part of the attractiveness of working with Lanza was they were willing to work on both projects initially, and they were willing to commit at their option to work on additional SURAs and pipeline molecules with the same economics as we originally negotiated for the first two molecules. So that was really appealing to us. We have a really broad pipeline of other opportunities that are very diverse. We have data, for example, in models of retinopathy, of dry eye, of kidney disease. So we're pretty confident we'll have future molecules for Monza to work on. And again, they were excited enough about these unique constructs that agonize an important signaling pathway that they were willing to commit to work on future molecules with the same economics as our first two. We thought maybe small companies would be more responsive but wouldn't have the breadth of capabilities. We thought with the breadth of capabilities, we'd get someone who was less responsive, not flexible. And we feel like we've gotten the benefits of both of those with Lanza. And would we make the same decision? Would we choose Lanza again? I'd say absolutely.